All right. So Starbucks logo, what brings you here today? You're not the one asking questions. I thought I was the star of the show, but I guess not. Take it away. All right, so topic and a purpose. So please introduce yourself and tell us a little about yourself. Uh, so my name is Jose Bermudez. Uh, I grew up on the west side over in the Seattle area. Uh, what am I guiding this towards? Uh, FIFA. FIFA? Okay. Yeah. Okay, restart. So... My name is Jose Bermudez. I'm from the west side over in Seattle. I've uh, basically been playing FIFA since I was just a little kid. Uh, I remember getting like FIFA 9 and 10. Yeah, they release kind of the same thing every year, but uh, the graphics are always better. The gameplay is getting a lot faster and just kind of the game's overall developing uh, over the years. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do since I was a kid. I've, it's kind of inspired me to watch all the leagues all the World Cups, all the tournaments that go around, and it's just uh, been a part of my life since uh, who knows how long. Is there anyone that's inspired you to continue playing FIFA or influenced you to uh, be better? You For you want to... Hold on. One sec, one sec. Is there anyone or anything that's influenced you to want to better yourself in FIFA? Uh, actually, kind of, yeah. So about, like... Two, three weeks ago, before the release of FIFA 20, uh, I was just kind of reading articles, just kind of seeing how the game was going to be. And then the latest FIFA champion had an interview, and I was like, all right, let's just, you know, see, see what, what he's about. And he was just like, yeah, I remember just casually playing with my friends, and I was never losing. And uh, so I just decided to jump into FIFA competitively, and... Uh, yeah, it was a rough grind in the beginning because I never played 40 matches with a span of, like, two or three days. Uh, and he was just like, but once you got through that, like, I started getting invites to tournaments and everything, and, and I was just like, well, I mean, if you can just kind of jump right into it, might as well, right? Uh, so that's kind of just pushed me to uh, see if, well, maybe I always beat my friends. I hardly ever lose to them, so what if that's me? What if... Uh, <laughs> I just jump in, and turns out I'm the best FIFA player out there. Interesting point of view. Is there any? Is there? Are there any issues that you've come across while playing FIFA? Oh yeah. So uh, <laughs> there's always a meta to every uh, FIFA game, and uh, the most seemingly reoccurring one is pace. Uh, so basically, you could have zero skill. But if you have the fastest player in the game, you're definitely just going to, you know, play him as much as you can. Just send him running. That's the only thing you can really do. And, well, in 1v1 situations, all you need is a semi-good player to make a goal every time, no matter who your keeper is. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, you're always probably going to lose that. Okay. Do you see yourself possibly qualifying for a competitive league or esports tournament? Uh, actually, yeah. It's kind of weird. So my record right now is probably not the best. Uh, I have sixty wins, about ten ties, and about thirty losses already. Uh, but just kind of the more I get into it, the more like I've already had to register for. Uh, just kind of the the e world cup tournament that they do and i was just kind of reading in on in and it's uh at the moment they're taking the top 16 players from each console pc kind of everything there uh but in previous like it really only takes about 20 wins uh on a weekend so uh every weekend you have to qualify for a weekend league and you have to win about 20 or so matches there and I think about it, like, if they give you about 30, 40 matches in a weekend, and you only got to win 20 of them to get an invite to a major tournament, I can definitely see myself doing that, seeing as how I kind of casually played this weekend. I think I did about 10 matches, and I won about 5, 6. 
Uh, I think getting 20 in a weekend where I have no tests, no exams, kind of free weekend, I can definitely get 20 wins. Do you think students also being esports competitors is a challenge? Yes. Uh, so you definitely already got to balance school and life and work if you do all that. I uh, do a health three. Uh, so balancing, you know, schoolwork, my uh, just social life and uh, trying to make money to actually uh, pay for apartment and food and everything is already difficult. Now, if you want to add in like actively playing uh, and winning, just uh, gaming, because with gaming, you just got to always be playing. You got to always keep yourself in that mojo and just uh, constantly push yourself because there's always some things you can fix. Uh, so constantly playing a singular game and just balancing uh, school, work, and just life, I, I think it's a lot more difficult than people think because uh, most people that are currently just playing are like people that are you know already in their careers or just kind of already settled in kind of their life. Uh, I think I had an extra hurdle to jump over seeing as I am in a university and trying to uh, do esports. I think it's definitely hard. If you were to qualify for a tournament or event and were invited, would you open it with... <laughs> Shit, hold on. If you were to qualify for one of these esports events, would you accept it with open arms or would you have your doubts and possibly not accept <laughs> it? Uh, you know, I, I probably wouldn't, like, deny it right then and there, but, uh... It's definitely something like, oh, I'm just going to go to a tournament to lose. Don't expect much out of a first tournament, you know? It's kind of very rare to see that happen. But I think it would be interesting to uh, kind of see what that environment's like. Like, you've always kind of, you know, if you follow esports in any sort of way, you kind of just see, like, highlights or just kind of short videos that you're following. But you've never actually got to be there. Like, how that environment uh, is just different when you're competing. Uh just depending on how far I need to go. I know they do it in California, they do it in Las Vegas. I mean, depending on the time frame, I would so be down to go uh, compete if uh, given the opportunity. Why do you think there's a stigma behind esports? Uh, I think just people don't want to accept that. Uh, you can be good at video games. We kind of just see it as a side hobby or just kind of something to take your, your mind off compared to being an actual athlete. I think that's probably the phrase that, I guess, triggers people is eSports. Uh, they're comparing it to, like, athletes and everything. I'm like, I'm not an athlete, but I'm definitely skilled in just kind of what these developers and everything. Like, it's a task. I don't know. Like we like being on a game show or like competing in like tetris and stuff all that checkers chess like we have champions for that so if esports is just being competitive in something that someone has developed and is a game that you can you know be the best at you know why are we not you know monetizing that why are we not putting our money into that i think that's probably the next best the, the next biggest thing to, to just gonna happen at the moment uh I think 10 to 20 years from now, maybe esports is just going to be the next big thing. And that's what people want to do because you kind of see it already. People are always just, you know, wanting to watch streamers and get involved in them. I think uh, slowly but surely, I think that stigma of just competitive esports gaming is going to die off and we'll start to accept it a little bit more. Well, thank you, Jose, for that great insight on the your future of FIFA esports gaming and also the and also the background of esports in general. I appreciate you coming to this interview. Thank you for having me.